So it seems like Australia has an Andrew Tate problem and a misogyny problem. And as a men's rights activist, I want to offer a solution. See, there's a concern about young boys in Australia being sucked into the world of Andrew Tate and his hatred and misogyny. But people are missing that this whole time there's been a moderate alternative, a non-misogynistic alternative, the men's rights movement. Now, I noticed this article had been posted on the Australian uh, subreddit, and it got a lot of attention and a lot of comments. And I found some of these comments very interesting, and I'd like to take a look at them in closer detail. A lot of the comments were saying the same thing. They recognized that there were problems that men and boys are facing, but that there's no good influences for them to turn to. And there's no one really stepping up and talking about men's issues, except for toxic people like Andrew Tate. There's a lot of comments to choose from. I put a link in the description so you can read the whole thread yourself, but here's one example. Bang on. These extremists, misogynists, bigots, etc. acknowledge these young boys' fears, insecurities, and worries about the world and give boys a heading, a path to live their life. We can't demonize these boys who are being drawn to Andrew Tate and others. That doesn't solve the issue. We individually, when we see an opportunity, have to step up and help our young boys when we can. We have to listen to their fears. We have to console their sadness and give them a better heading than Andrew Tate. It's all very well to highlight this on the internet, so I hope someone reading this will step up when a boy needs help and listen to him. And that's exactly what the men's rights movement has been trying to do for decades. And we've been called misogynists, we've been called incels, and we've been attacked constantly for it. So young men that have these experiences, right, they see the way that the moderate men's rights movement gets treated. So what do they do? It radicalizes them, right? They try and express themselves. They get pushed down for it. They get called misogynists. They get called incels. And so they get radicalized towards Andrew Tate. You also had a lot of posts saying that men are being discriminated in Australia today. And to my surprise, they were getting a lot of upvotes. I often hear that it's okay to discriminate against young women in university admissions and early career opportunities because it's correcting an imbalance. Young women are already nearly 70% of graduates and successful candidates for graduate programs. Yet all universities and most large companies still running special programs for women to give women an additional leg up in these areas. The idea seems to be that old generations discriminated against women, so younger generations are allowed to discriminate against men as payback. It's based on a fundamentally flawed idea that people are representatives of groups, not individuals in their own right. That it's fine to discriminate against parts of a group so long as the relationship between overall groups becomes more balanced. But of course, you're not really correcting an imbalance, you're just adding even more discrimination in an opposing direction. And that's exactly right. The point of that is saying the people alive now are the people alive now. So it doesn't balance things out to punish people for something that happens before they were born. That doesn't make it equal. If you have two 21 year old job applicants now, a man and a woman, the way to treat them equally is to treat them equally, not punish the male applicant because of things that happened decades before he was even alive. Now, I thought this exchange uh, was very interesting. So it starts off with uh, two Google links about uh, programs available for boys and girls. And then they said this, boys have not a single program in the front page targeted at them. Girls have tons. The boys are doing worse at school, worse at uni. They're being told that some of the things they like are toxic masculinity without being given alternative avenues to channel some of their energy. I'd hate to be a teenage boy right now. I think Andrew Tate is repulsive, but I think he is a symptom of a wider program. Maybe they meant problem, but program works too. Society has pulled back from traditional masculinity, but that hasn't provided support for boys to grow into a new form of masculinity. Society left a void. He's willing to fill it. So then there was a response. Society has made teaching such an undesirable profession that men barely go into it. And women have been disadvantaged for so long that the programs now exist to help girls in schools, mostly put in place by other women. 
no such program for boys. But we did kind of discuss before how that doesn't help. Like, you know, only focusing on one gender now doesn't really fix the problems of the past. Anyway, the person responded, it's been over a decade since girls overtook boys in nearly every single schooling area. Are you trying to argue that it is fair boys are so far behind in school because most teachers are women? And this is the response. Of course it's not fair, but women have stepped up to help girls. Where are the men? Right here. MRAs have been here all along. The moderate men's rights movement that doesn't like Andrew Tate, that doesn't support misogyny, and that just wants to talk about the issues affecting men and boys that we're talking about. Groups like the National Coalition for Men in the US, CAFE in Canada. And if you want to look up men's rights groups in Australia, this is what I found on Google. They're all over the place. And we've always been here. The men's rights movement has always been about equality. It's never been about misogyny and it's never been about supporting people like Andrew Tate. It's just about identifying and correcting discriminations and issues affecting men and boys. One of the big ones we've been talking about for many, many years is the education gap. We've warned people for many, many years that it was coming. And look at where we are now. So instead of demonizing and attacking the men's rights movement, maybe you should do what you've been suggesting in this very thread. Listen to what men and boys have to say. And this last one really kind of sums up the point that I'm trying to make. I think a lot of the anti-violence and misogyny campaigners should look at themselves and how their rhetoric helps people like Tate Griffith and audience too. When you otherize young boys and men, it becomes very, very easy to radicalize them. And unfortunately, when young boys and young men are hearing all men are guilty so often, it doesn't matter what your intentions are. You need to consider if you're actually helping at all or just making it worse. And that's a point I've made for a very long time on this channel. When people try talking about men's rights or call themselves MRAs, don't bash them. Don't call them misogynistic incels. Maybe listen to what they have to say because maybe they have some valid points. If you demonize anyone trying to talk about men's rights, exactly like that comment said, you're going to make it easy for people like Andrew Tate to come in and have influence. When you silence the moderate voice, where else do people go? So anyway, hopefully we can start making some progress in this conversation. And hopefully people can start seeing that the men's rights movement, we really are the good guys. We're not misogynists. We don't like Andrew Tate. And we just want equality. And it's kind of simple as that. Anyway, I'm Blue Orange 22. Thanks for watching.